This is Next Gen Open World Games, Scene 1, Take 1. I've been playing a lot of open world games lately. I'm not exactly sure why, though. Maybe it's because I wanted to cross off the biggest, longest games in my gaming backlog, or maybe I wanted that wonderful drowning feeling when you play a game that's stuffed with so many different things to do. Or maybe, just maybe, it's because I've been stuck in my house for the last six months during the whole COVID quarantine thing. Regardless of the reason, I've been really enjoying my time with Assassin's Creed Origins, Ghost of Tsushima, Batman Arkham Knight, and other blockbuster titles. They all have that AAA feel to them with lots of interlocking systems and big beautiful worlds filled to the brim with side content. But it also feels a bit weird playing these games right before the launch of the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. With all of the next gen hype, the press releases and live streams and teaser trailers, it feels like I'm sitting under a guillotine. Sure, I'm having fun now, but as soon as those next gen consoles drop, all of these games are gonna be out of date. Has-beens, old news, or so the marketing hype would have you believe. There is always going to be tension between the old and the new, especially in a console launch year. But what I've been thinking about in particular is what next gen means for open world games. Most console launches are based around making video games prettier and bigger. Higher resolution, brighter colors, louder explosions, denser crowds, larger environments, etc., etc. And that worked really well for a long time. But when I play Batman Arkham Knight, a game originally released five years ago, and it still looks fantastic, it's hard to see why we need next gen at all. Now, I know that's a bit of an exaggeration. Yes, I want to play at 4K 60 FPS just as much as you do, and I also hate load times. But what I'm trying to get at is that open world games are in a great place right now. And making them bigger and prettier, while not a bad thing, isn't exactly a generational leap forward. I'm not even sure I could tell the difference between a PS4 and a PS5 open world game. But folks, I have good news. I'm here with you today to present some of my ideas on how to make a truly next gen open world game. Number one, I want NPCs that are alive. I wanna know that every person I see on the screen, whether they're a company executive or a village peasant, is one of a kind with their own unique look and mannerisms and job that they have to go to every day and a home that they sleep in at night and loved ones that they care for and enemies that they despise. Most open world games use cookie cutter assets to fill out the population. A dozen faces, a dozen bodies, mix them together with basic animations, and you get a boring crowd. But with all the processing power and rapid storage of next-gen technology, a lot of that can be fleshed out. And while I'm making grand wishes, I also want more options for interaction between the player and random NPCs. I want to ask a stranger in a tavern how to get to my next objective. I want to visit a corner store so much that the owner becomes a good friend who knows my name and I know his kids and we do favors for each other. I want to find the villain's high school sweetheart, woo her with flowers, and then abandon her at the altar just to make the villain mad with rage. A person's connection to the world around them isn't just about physical locations, but also the relationships they have with the people within it. If you make the NPCs more realistic and let the player form deeper bonds with them, then the game would feel so much more alive. Speaking of liveliness, my second idea for how to make a next-gen open world game is Make player actions matter. I'm not talking about a scripted scene where you get a little button prompt saying, be the hero or be the bad guy. I'm not even talking about RPG systems with skill trees and stat options. I'm talking about real change. What if your actions impacted you and the world in deep and meaningful ways? Most open world games have a main story that is ironically linear and story missions that are predefined set pieces with choreographed fights. What if those major events could happen at any time or at any place? What if your actions determined how the story unfolded? For example, let's think about the hypothetical Grand Theft Auto 6. You're playing the game and decide to attack a rival gang. You start shooting at them, and in the gunfight, your buddy gets killed. Your whole game changes. All your missions and objectives now revolve around vengeance for your friend. So you get mad and you head straight for the rival crime lord and somehow you take him out. But now his minions have started fighting each other, turning the entire city into a war zone. 
There's gangs everywhere, martial law is declared, and nobody is safe. Now your only objective is to survive. All of that happened because of how you acted. You could have kept your friend alive or avoided the fight in the first place, but you didn't, and the game changed because of it. That's just one example of how player choice can actually make a difference. And I'm sure you can think of some too. Heck, anybody who's played a Battle Royale game knows how much storytelling can occur in a single match. And all of it is because of where you choose to land, what gear you wanted to pick up, and which fights you ran towards or away from. Player choice is not a new idea in video games, but up to now, the impact of that choice has been very minimal. But part of the appeal of the open world genre is that you can go anywhere and do anything. Why not extend that to the story? My final piece of advice for next-gen open world games is get creative. This one is less prescriptive and more motivational, but I really mean it. Get creative with your game design. The launch of new consoles is the perfect time to push the boundaries of what is possible. The PS5 and Xbox Series X are orders of magnitude faster than the current generation. Why not use that technology to try out something crazy? What if your open world game emulated every possible social system, from the relationships between the NPCs to the inventory of local stores to the seasonal health of the populace? A player could then manipulate those systems for their own benefit, like buying pharmaceutical stocks right before releasing the bubonic plague, or spreading an urban legend about a frog-faced monster to make your masked robberies that much more terrifying. Here's another idea. Make the entire game dynamically generated, and I mean all of it. The characters, the setting, the story beats. Think AI Dungeon made 3D and open world. The player is presented with an opening scenario. Let's say you're a 1920s detective looking for a murderer, and the player could react however they want to. Go to the crime scene, interview the victim's friends, call it a day and go to the bar. And the game engine accommodates for that, reacting to the player's decisions and dynamically presenting them with whatever location or NPC they need. Anything you want to do, you can do it. The world's first truly open world game. There are so many unexplored ideas in the open world genre, and that kind of makes sense. It's easier to build off of what is known and familiar than it is to create a fresh. But the video game market is saturated with games that look and play and feel very similar to one another. The next gen hype isn't any different. Of all of the games shown at the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X press conferences, none of them have really grabbed me or made me excited. Sure, the technology is impressive, but teraflops don't mean diddly squat if the games play the same way. I want to see developers take big risks with their next-gen titles. Because at the end of the day, hardware isn't the only thing that drives the industry forward. It's also about games that are full of new ideas and new ways to play. And that's what gets me excited about next-gen. Oh, hello there. You've caught me practicing my reading. Boy, I sure wish I wasn't illiterate. Clearly you've enjoyed another Subpixel video. If you could like, comment, or subscribe, it lets us and it lets YouTube know that our content is worth watching. In the meantime, I'm going to get back to pretending.